Hello and welcome to We Poets. My name is Sally Baker and I'm the host of We Poets. We Poets is a poetry show for boys and girls between the ages of 6 and 13. So if you would like to be on the program, please have your parents or your school teacher call me. I'm always looking for new youngsters to come and read their poems on We Poets. Tonight we have a very special guest, and her name is Mary Bohr. She's a case manager at Supportive Services for Veteran Families, and she's going to tell us all about this wonderful agency that helps veterans. So without further ado, here we go. Hi, Mary. Hi, Sally. Thank you so much for inviting me over this evening. It's a delight to be able to be a part of your show. I'm so glad you can come. Thank so you. we're going to jump right in, and my first question is, let me turn my page here. For the purpose of viewer members that do not know what the SSVF program is, can you please explain it to us? I would be delighted to. So, Supportive Services for Veteran Families program was enacted through bipartisan support through the Obama administration in 2010. We at Berkeley Food and Housing Project, we were able to open up our doors as a grantee of the Veterans Administration and operate in Alameda, Contra Costa, and Solano County. Our goal is to be able to minimize and end veteran homelessness or prevent a veteran from becoming homeless. And what are some of the things that cause this veteran to become homeless? Things that cause a veteran to become homeless are increase in rent rates, um, people not being able to get the jobs that they need to be able to be sustainable within the community, uh, fixed incomes, um, sometimes it could be lack of social skills, or just being able to come back from military service and reacclimate in the community. It's not as easy as people think it is. I know. Do you have as many men as women, or is it about equal? No, it is not equal. There are much more men than there are women but there is a good number of women out here needing the assistance just the same. Mm -hmm. And how many of these uh, men or women have families, children? Uh, that comes in a various, varying number. We support veterans and veterans that have families with them. Um, I believe my number was about 56 families served last year, and, and that's a, a remembrance. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't, I did not come exactly with us. Today. That's all right. So That's all right. No problem. No problem. <laughs> now, where is your office located? Uh, we have an office. Our, our corporate office is located here in Berkeley. Mm -hmm. um, when we became a grantee of the Veterans Administration, that gave us a new road home. That road home took us into Contra Costa and Solano County. I have an office in Richmond, and I also have an office in Solano. Great, great. Now, do you, how many staff people do you have? We have eight staff members operating our uh, offices between Vallejo and Richmond, and we have, I believe, four outreach workers and a chaplain in the community. Oh, great, great. Mm -hmm. And what are the hours that you're open and the days of the week? Eight to four, Monday through Friday. Uh, one of our um, housing specialist actually works Tuesday through Saturday, so she's able to reach more landlords during business hours on the Saturday than what she's able to um, during the week sometimes. Mm -hmm. so now, if an emergency situation would arise, what do you do if a veteran would call, you know, in an emergency situation? Does somebody there to answer the phone or what? There is not no one, there's nobody there to answer the phone outside of business hours. Mm -hmm. However, veterans are fully aware of the emergency hotline through the Veterans Administration that provides crisis support services at any time. Oh, that's great. That's great. Now, uh, let's see here. You just explained the two different types of housing crisis circumstances. How do you assist the two different varying circumstances? Uh, the difference in the circumstances are one, a veteran can be literally homeless. That means this person is actually living out there in what I say is the world, um, uh, whether it's at the, I've just lost That's right. Maybe on the street. <laughs> on the street. Sleeping on the street. In, in a community park, in a mm -hmm. car or in a shelter. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that are the hardest to serve and those are the ones that we want to serve first. Right. Um, and we want to get them out of their circumstance, provide wraparound services to them so we can help stabilize them. The other part of our program is called a prevention services and that is when somebody, for instance, gets a 60-day vacate notice because 
they are no longer going to take a Section 8 voucher. They're raising the rent rates. And this family is on the brink of becoming homeless, and we want to prevent them from actually being out in the world. Oh, yes, and especially during this rainy weather, I see so many homeless people sleeping on the streets, you know, and I just don't see how they exist, you know. Well, that is what Berkeley Food and Housing Project is here for. We are the point of contact for all homeless persons in the city of Berkeley, and our shelters are open to men, women, children, veterans, and also people suffering from mental health disorders. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Now, um, this sounds like a very big job for someone to do with being a case manager. How do you get people into housing or save them from losing their homes they have been in for years? Well, it's not something that can be done alone, Sally. No, I'm sure it isn't. <laughs> no way. No, it, it's actually a team effort, and there's actually six different areas to our team. First, it starts with the outreach workers. Our outreach workers are literally homeless veterans that have overcome their circumstances, and they are out there in the streets with boots on the ground with a chaplain assisting them, looking to be able to help people get into the program. We have our program coordinator who is actually the first point of contact whenever that hotline call comes in. She then takes, starts the assessment, she hands it off to a person such as myself, a case manager, or one of my other co-workers that also do the same thing, and then we begin the case services. From there, we coordinate with the uh, employment specialist. It's imperative that we get these veterans back into the workforce, get them on their feet, get them financial incomes to be able to meet these rent and economic demands, and also get them financial services and counseling through the employment specialist. None of this could be done without a housing specialist who creates this wonderful relationship with landlords throughout the communities that are willing to take in our veterans knowing that they are overcoming difficult positions in life. And we are under the leadership of our program uh, manager, Ms. Natalie Ziva, who guides us in, on a daily basis and provides all of the services that we need and support that we need to get our job done. Great, great. Now, please tell us how a veteran family gets started in the program. We sort of touched on that already, didn't we? But yes. Is there anything else you'd like to add to that? Well, the way that they get started in the program is first they have to call a hotline number or from one of our outreach workers. And the hotline is where our program a coordinator picks up and gives them a phone call back and does a pre-screen form. That way we can decide whether or not they are eligible for the services or not. about some of these things here on the table yes. that you give to the veterans. I would love to. Okay. You will see supportive services for veteran family staff out in the community wearing these t-shirts or hoodie jackets and this is to be able to let people know that there is a hotline number for a homeless veteran to be able to call and this is part of our attire actually on the job and out in the, in the um, community on a regular basis. Great. Along with the staff shirt, we have the neon green that we like to put our um, outreach team in. The purpose for that is because we want them to be bright, we want them to be seen, and we want people to recognize them, especially if it's later in the day and it's in a less visible circumstance. Whenever they're out into the, um, basically the trenches, going into encampments, looking for people, it's very much an identifying factor to be able to see the shirt and recognize who that person is and know that they're an outreach worker for our program. Great, great. Mm -hmm. Now, 
Is this is a bag that you have that you give the veterans? Could mm -hmm. you hold that up and tell us what that is, please? This is. This is one of our tote bags. We also have backpacks that we give out to the veterans. And what we do with this bag is we fill this bag with some outreach supplies. That way we can give them some basic needs. Out in the community, they have something to tote it around in, and they're able to keep some of their personal possessions with them in this clean, durable uh, zipper and waterproof bag. Great. Now, what are some of these items that you put in the bags? We have our SSVF water bottle. What is most common is our veterans out there in the community are not hydrated. They're not eating well, and we want to make certain that they have a sip of water to be able to drink while they're with us and maybe even go and refill and keep carrying it inside their tote bag. Oh, that's great. On the back, on the back of there, it's also our hotline number. As you are well aware, everything that we have has our hotline number because we want people to pick up that phone. That is your entry into the program by calling the 855-862-1804 hotline number. Great, great. Now, here are some other things. I'll just pass these down and you okay. tell us. Okay. Uh, or should I give you the bag first? Oh, we can start as a, we, we have okay. pens. Okay. Inside the uh, bag as well. And then once again, it's Berkeley Food and Housing Project, SSVF, with our hotline number. And there is a stylist on the end. A lot of times their fingers have arthritis mm -hmm. and it gets hard for them to hold those phones, type and use them. So now we've got a stylist to make it easier, especially for some of the older population that are out there. We always want people to be able to have visibility. We give them a flashlight so that way they can always be seen and see where they're going and get what they need throughout the evening times. Great, great. During the summertime, sun exposure it clips onto your belt loop and able to be held onto with this clasp. It's sunscreen. We want them to be able to minimize their exposure to the sunlight, um, especially whenever they're taking medications. These veterans are out there and they're on medications and they're not supposed to have sun exposure. We want to help protect them through all eras of the elements. Great. Do you provide like all aspirins uh, for them? We do not give out any type of medication. Okay. We don't know what a veteran is taking. That's right. We don't want to give any type of conflicting, um, mm -hmm. whether it's over the counter right. or not. Right. It, yes, medication to someone. Yes, okay. Now, what do we have here in this plastic bag? And this goes with it, right? Yes. Okay. It, we, we, keep a, a, we give them a hygiene kit. There's some lotion, there's some soap, waterless soap actually. So that way if they're just outside in maybe a tent in an encampment, they're able to just get a cloth and wash up and keep themselves clean. That is so important for somebody who has not doesn't have their own home to be able to get up and take a shower every day. They have a hygiene kit that also comes with a flyer explaining that if you're a homeless veteran or if you know a homeless veteran, once again, here is our hotline number. This hygiene kit they're able to take in to the multi-service center over at Berkeley uh, Food and Housing Projects men's shelter during the day and go in and take a, a shower, get freshened up and have an opportunity to feel clean and be clean and go back out into their, their community and start a new day. That's right. And it's so important that we're clean every day, you know. Every day. And when these men and women are sleeping out on the streets and they can't bathe and have a bathroom. Brush their teeth. Brush their use teeth. Use some deodorant, yes, you know. Yes, yes. And, and when they're out there in the world, we're still trying to help them get into other areas to be able to rebuild their life. We want them in employment services. We want to get them jobs. And how can you feel good about yourself if you're just not able to take a shower? That's right. That's why this program is what we call a housing first model. The Veterans Administration firmly believes that if we are able to get a veteran into stabilized housing, we are able to break down any barriers he or she may be facing so that way they can keep themselves and their families safe. That's right. Now, do you have, uh, are the shelters for men and women both or you have separate uh, separate shelters for women and separate for men? The shelters, depending on which one you're using, mm -hmm. because we are in Alameda, Contra Costa, and Solano County, we have shelters here in Berkeley that are just for women and just for men. Um, in uh, Fairfield, we have one that is co-ed on a, a particular site that 
separates the men and women, but they are both there on the same grounds. And then we have one out in um, Antioch that is a Victorian home that has been separated into four different units. One unit is for women, three units are for men. Good. So we, we are working throughout the community in collaboration with another program called Grant Per Diem, and that is offered by the Veterans Administration. It's temporary transitional housing while we work with people to be able to get them into permanent placement. Great. Now, do you provide clothing for the, for the veterans, like uh, T-shirts and jeans and socks and shoes? When we have donations that come in and we are able to give out donations to the veterans, then yes, we do. Um, part of their, their stability plan with the case manager might include some purchased clothing to be able to help get them into an interview and to meet some of those other basic standard needs that have, they have going on in their lives to overcome some circumstances. So there are a few varying points where we do. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. if anybody watching the show would like to donate any of these items, what would they do to donate? They would need to contact our office at 510-260-0873. The clothing must be clean, it must be in decent condition, mm -hmm. and we cannot take an overflow, but we do take limited amounts, and we would be delighted to see what you have, so that way we can find out whether or not we're able to hold on to it and give it out. Do mm -hmm. you need blankets and pillows? We need sleeping bags. Sleeping bags. Sleeping bags, more things to create hygiene kits, um, canned foods. Mm. Um, we do like to get the ones with a pop top on it because mm -hmm. if they're outside, they're able to pop that top right. and, you know, maybe warm something up right. in, in a microwave at the gas station. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Good. We, we do take things like that. Great. Now, let's see. Here's a few other things we haven't talked about, please. Oh, and this is our uh, our... Hygiene kit, not hygiene kit. <laughs> Excuse me. Our first aid kit. Good. You know, people are out there. They need wet wipes. They need Band-Aids. They need tweezers if they get a splinter. So there is a small um, amount of Band-Aids and also uh, antiseptic wipes inside here. So this is a first aid kit that also attaches to the, to the bag. And then we are able to keep them from harm by giving them some small items. Good, good. Or infection, I should say. So many things we take for granted when we have a home. Exactly. And we, we feel so sorry for these homeless people. They don't have some of these things when they're on the street. Right. Yes. It, it, it is a bare minimum essential. You're yes. correct. Yes. It is so easy for us to go over to CVS mm -hmm. or even the dollar store mm -hmm. and pick up a bottle of peroxide or a Band-Aid whenever we cut ourselves. Yes. And it's not that easy for no, them. No, no. So an antiseptic wipe mm -hmm. and a Band-Aid mm -hmm. inside their um, little outreach bag is, is essential. Good. Now, what is this, please? This is for them to keep their coffee warm. Good. Okay. <laughs> Many times you see somebody sitting next to McDonald's mm -hmm. and they're asking for some change. Well, we take that for granted. Also, yes. um, I, I have a coffee pot at home, but a warm cup of coffee to a homeless first person or a veteran is, is essential. It's very rewarding to be able to have something as simple as that. So we give them these mugs, you know, and that way they can go and keep their coffee cup clean yes. and fill it up. People at McDonald's will often give them an opportunity to get a free cup of coffee Good. or Starbucks sometimes. Good. So um, oh, you see, some of my veterans out in Antioch, they, the, the Starbucks actually um, helps them keep their cup full. Oh, that's very great. very rewarding. Now, what are these little goodies here? Oh, we've got some protein bars, uh, high in vitamin content. So that way they're inside um, their little gift bag, their outreach bag. And that way they have a few snacks to be able to tote around with them, some water, some uh, hygiene products, uh, their coffee mug. That way they're always got a little something to call their own and feels good to them. Great. Now, do you give them fruit? We, when we have fruit, mm -hmm. yes, we do. We will pass it out, mm -hmm. most definitely. Do some of the produce companies donate fruit? Uh, actually, not directly to us, but to Berkeley Food and Housing Projects. Um, hot meal. 
So whenever they, they give the hot meal over at the Lutheran Church on mm -hmm. University, those, those foods do come from donations. Oh, great, great. Yes. Now, do you need volunteers? We could always look for volunteers, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be very helpful. Uh, the, the biggest thing that somebody could do is if you know anybody that might be suffering from a housing crisis and is in need of some services is to give them our hotline number. That is the biggest assistance. Just continue to pass the word of what we're doing and help us to be a part of ending veteran homelessness. Yes. Now, one other thing here we have, uh, is it a postcard? It, it is a postcard, yes. Could you hold um, that up to camera three and tell us what that is, please? This is, this is our postcard. Actually, we have some of them right now in uh, the county of Solano, posted in the bus systems, um, and they've done this for six months for us for free. They were generous, and they invited the idea so that way we can get the word out that we are out here ending and eliminating veteran homelessness. On the back side, it says, are you a homeless veteran? Berkeley Food and Housing Project Supportive Services for Veteran Family Program provides services to homeless veterans in Solano, Contra Costa, and Alameda County. Who is eligible? Any veteran who is discharged under conditions other than dishonorable, homeless looking to maintain permanent housing, extremely low income, served at least one day of active duty outside of basic training, we can provide rental assistance, temporary financial assistance, case management services, housing assistance, and much more. We would need for you to call if you are in a housing crisis, whether it's for prevention or rapid rehousing, our hotline number. Once again, that number is 855-862-1804. We look forward to hearing from you. I have one uh, following question here. Oh, I, Prior to the taping, you told me a story about how you helped a husband and wife veteran couple stabilize after being discharged. Can you briefly tell us their story again? I would be delighted to. I had a family come back home. He, after serving three combat tours, three bulging discs in his back as well, um, his wife had discharged military services a little bit prior to him because she was pregnant with their second child. He returned from Arizona and went to move in with his mother, his wife, and his three children. So both of them are Air Force veterans, honorably discharged. And when they went to live with their mother, the landlord said, no, I'm so sorry, but we cannot add five more people to your family unit. So it put them in a housing crisis. They had a couple of weeks to be able to figure out what they were going to do and how they were going to keep their children safe, get them into school, and be able to meet all of the needed requirements that they had in order to stabilize themselves financially, mentally, and emotionally. They got into the SSVF program. and. We assisted them as they got themselves into housing, and we have been able to sustain their rent for the past couple of months. I was able to get the veteran over to the veteran service officer, start filing a compensation claim, begin working on getting both the wife and himself into school so that way they can get their post 9-11 GI Bill benefits and their children spent their first Halloween inside their home decorated went trick-or-treating and it was such a delightful joy to be able to see this family stabilize so quickly and not spend one day literally homeless on the streets that is what our prevention team is all about keeping our families safe keeping our children warm and at home, and keeping them in school and moving them along in their lives. Great, great. Well, that's what we need to do to help these men and women who have gone and served our country. And yes. many of them come back with mental problems and they've lost limbs, you know. Right. Uh, do you help the veterans uh, get to physical therapy and they need wheelchairs or crutches or what? I, I work with other programs, um, so yes, I do. Uh, Delta Veterans Group is a nonprofit organization out in Antioch, and we are part of another movement called Stand Down on the Delta. We have um, 
ADL equipment available for veterans, uh, power chairs, uh, basic wheelchairs. Sometimes we get a hospital bed. These are just calls that people would have to, to bring into our, um, our phone line and see if we can find a way to get some of these resources out to them. There are many people out in the community working to help end the, the veteran homelessness. Mm -hmm. Would you like to touch on the problems that some of the children have? Um, some of the if they're the, homeless. Well, it 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 becomes um, fear, anxiety, right. um, and they don't know where they're going to eat. They don't know where they're going to sleep. Mm -hmm. They don't know how they're going to make it to school the next day. Are they going to look clean? Are they going to have clean clothes, fresh clothes? Are they going to be able to take a sack lunch to school with mm -hmm. them? It is it is our duty as civilians to serve our veteran community the same as they have served us as as they did whenever they signed those paperwork to be able to go into military service. We need people such as landlords to jump on board, take a chance, have faith in what we do, and have faith in the veteran and the family that served you to be able to give you what you have today. Mm -hmm. Were any of your family members veterans? Yes, Sally, they were. Actually, I come from a family of veterans. My grandfather was a WW2 veteran, and the oldest veteran that I have housed through the, the SSVF program was also a World War II veteran. It was such a delight to be able to collaborate with the HUD BASH team at the Veterans Administration and get this person into permanent housing. My uncle was a Korea. Korean veteran, my father was a Vietnam veteran, and my brother was Desert Storm. Wow, so, so you have a full family, right, that served their country. I do, I do, and I feel like I'm standing in my father's honor serving the community as he served us. Wonderful. Now, yeah. is there anything else you would like to put out before we close? Um, it, the only thing that I would like to say is if you need assistance outside of the hotline, you're more than welcome to call me or any of my staff at 510-260-0873. Okay, we're out of here. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.